Welcome to Video Marketing Study Group Office Hours, everybody. Um, welcome. It's June 30th. I think this is like our 16th, 17th iteration. So yeah, we're just going to keep rolling with the punches. As I was saying when I was on mute, tell us in the chat who you are, where you're coming from. If you have any questions, we're going to go ahead and conduct a Q&A at the end of this session. Um, so we'll be happy to answer all your questions. And then if you have any question kind of just pertaining to the content, Go ahead and throw the question in the chat. We can always stop and answer it right then and there as well. So this is pretty free flowing. We'll go ahead and introduce ourselves. My name is Aaron Oberdick. I'm the video marketing manager here at Nexon e Marketing, and we obviously run office hours here as well for HubSpot. And I am uh, Corey Christian. I am the multimedia marketer here at Next Any Marketing. I had to read that for some reason, as though I don't know who I am. Um, and <laughs> yeah, I assist Aaron with all things video, as well as a lot of other kind of just wherever I can lend a hand, design, emails, any any kind of projects we're running. Absolutely. All right. So before we hop into the actual content of the presentations today, a few things we would like to just kind of mention to you. So HubSpot Video Marketing Study Group, Corey's going to go ahead and drop the link in the chat there. Make sure you hop over to here. It's basically a large community of HubSpot people all looking for the same thing, anything video related. So we're talking about video concepts over there, video pre-production, video production, post-production, really just anything video related, right? If you have equipment questions, if you have questions on the front end, on the back end, really just anything related there, go ahead and drop us a question there because it's kind of a 24 seven forum. We like to kind of also pick the questions we really like to see throughout the month and then highlight them in the office hours presentation. So you might have a question that also gets answered live. Definitely go check that out. We're almost to a thousand members. So that's going pretty strong there. And then also make sure you register for our next hug event. It's all about video production. So really what's going on while you're recording, we're going to go over shooting tips, how to get started and things to consider for video production. So go register for that. That's going to be on August 18th this year. And then the last thing I want to mention is going to be the HubSpot bootcamp for video marketing, sales and service. So this is kind of the most elaborate of the three. Of course, you have the study group, which is just basically a forum board. Then you have our hugs, which are similar to these events, but a little bit more extended and cover a little bit more of content. But then the largest thing is the boot camp is really a six week course aimed at getting you into video. So all of your questions pertaining to video, maybe you're trying to figure out how can I get started with video in the marketing world, but you really don't know where to start. Maybe it's concepts, maybe it's equipment that you're having hiccups with. We're here to help. And we basically week by week, break it down from start to finish. So that way at the end of the six week course, you feel comfortable recording your own videos. And of course you have weekly submissions where you record different homework assignments and we go over them. And then at the end of the boot camp, you get a six week certification. So you get a HubSpot certification and it's all wrapped up with a nice bow there. So definitely go check that out if that sounds interesting. And if you really want to dive into video more on the marketing side, we'll definitely be able to help you out. And that's going to start on July 20th, I believe. Is that correct, Corey? I think you're muted there. We're, we both make the mute mistake here. Uh-huh. Uh, yeah, I believe you are correct. July 20th. So, and then of course we have the registration link there in the chat. So go ahead and check that out for more information. All right. So the content today, we're going to be talking about a few things we'll cover going over some video equipment focus. So we're really going to hone in on cameras. What kind of camera do you need to get started? And then let's say you're here and you have video experience. You say, yeah, I have, I have camera experience. Maybe you want to take that next step. We're basically going to cover cameras from beginning all the way up to kind of that Hollywood production style and really everything in between there. So Corey's just going to kind of walk us through on camera steps. And then we're going to talk about some new product releases. What came out recently? Are there any sort of updates in the video world? Then we're going to do a quick Q and a about cameras. So basically everything from the study group that people were asking in the last month, I kind of pulled in about cameras and we'll answer them here live during the office hours. And then last, we'll conduct a Q&A. If you guys have any questions during the end of this session, we're more than happy to answer all those questions. All right, Corey, I'll hand it on over to you. So you want to go ahead and get started with some recommended video cameras? 
I can indeed. Um, so the first thing that you see here uh, on the left there, it's not exactly a camera itself. It's just the uh, screen of a normal FaceTime, right? Mm -hmm. So basically what I'm saying here is use your webcam, right? Use what you have. If most computers these days, laptops and things, even iMacs, like what I'm using, um, have cameras built into them. Uh, the most important thing here is to just start making video part of your everyday workflow. Um, so just trying to start integrating it with as much as you can, whether it's, um, you know, email signatures or whatever other kind of things you might just be sending to your clients and stuff, just getting video as part of your everyday journey um, is really important with this. And just utilizing what you have can be a great way to start that. Um, if you are looking to start kind of leveling up from there, right, my camera on my computer isn't that great. I'd like to start using something better. Um, what we have here is a Logitech Brio. These are, they're around like $200 or so. Um, this is a 4K camera. It has a uh, higher resolution, so it's got a much more detailed image. Um, also a better sensor, so it's going to have a little bit better exposure and color overall. If you're not necessarily like the best lighting environments or something, it's going to look a little bit um, better than probably just your normal camera that's built into your computer, right? Because it's more dedicated, it serves a purpose. Um, so these ones are great kind of option for stepping up from your computer webcam. And then our next slide Absolutely. is going to be our uh, marketing camera options. So this is kind of when you've decided I need to step up my quality, right? I need to start filming videos, getting the camera off of my computer onto a tripod and starting to produce uh, actual content, right? So I went ahead here and I grabbed kind of three uh, options that are available right now. Um, these cameras are admittedly about 90% of what most consumers need. These are going to be really high level step up in quality from your uh, web camera or even like your cell phone or something like that um, without necessarily starting to kind of break the bank. These, all of these cameras are between like $2,000 and $2,500 for the camera itself. And then, you know, you get into batteries and lenses and all that fun stuff. But these are kind of a really great entry level for people. And so the, the one that's there on the top left, this one is a Sony a7 III. We actually have a couple of these ones that we use. Um, these are a really great full frame entry level camera. They're only about $2,000. They are uh, Sony quality. So you've got you know a great kind of neutral picture that comes out of them. So nothing necessarily kind of funky or weird looking. It just looks kind of very natural. Um, and there's plenty of things like tons of lenses available for these. Um, and it's a really great option for those just starting out. Um, it does have maybe some limited record quality issues. It's, you know, not as high quality as some of like, for example, the other two that are here. Um, but it comes at a cheaper price, which is always nice. Um, so if you are looking to kind of step up the quality, there are some other options. Things like, for example, the Panasonic GH6. This guy, about $2,200 or so. Um, these things are super small. They're lightweight. They have really, really great stabilization. So you barely need a tripod. If you film a lot of like product videos or things where you're really kind of showing things off to people, this can be really great because you can get that camera up into their faces. Um, also very high quality files, 5.7 K, uh, they can shoot at 4k at 60 P and a 422 10 bit. Like what that means is it's really, really high resolution, but also really high quality data and color information as well. Um, unlimited record times come with this camera as well, which is pretty sweet. Um, so if you need any long form content, you need to film, you know, an hour or two seminar, you can actually let this thing run for quite a long time because it's such a small sensor inside. Um, it doesn't heat up very much. The downside to having a small sensor is that it's not as strong in lower lighting conditions. So you are going to kind of struggle there a little bit. Um, the one at the bottom I have is the Canon R6. That one is kind of the, the most expensive of the three of them comes in around 2,500 bucks or so, but this is kind of both of those cameras put together. It's got the 4K, the 60P, it's got 1080 at 120 frames per second, all at 422 and 10 bits. So really high color information and quality in the files. Um, and it's full frame. 
Canon has the best autofocus, hands down. So if that's really important to you, this is probably going to be your best bet. Um, although it is the highest price of these three options, it also has the most features. There's not a ton of lenses yet for them, um, but there are plenty to get you started. So it's not really, I wouldn't say that that's a thing that's going to hold you back, but it's uh, definitely a great option for kind of stepping up that quality, like I said. So sure. our uh, and, and next category here. Corey, can I just hop in uh, real quick? I, another. No, yeah, of course. Sorry. Yeah, I just wanted to hop in real quick and mention also that the camera, the marketing cameras are beneficial because they're kind of small and lightweight. So like, obviously with technology involvement or evolving, you know, 10 years ago, you might be shooting on a shoulder mount or something that's a little bit smaller, handheld like DV cam camera. And that might be pretty bulky and weigh, you know, 15, 20 pounds to where these guys are only just a few pounds. So it's just another kind of benefit in these regards. You'll see as we kind of bump up, the cameras do get a little bit bigger and heavier. So like Corey was saying, these have 90% of the features that everybody needs. So these will usually be utilized by most people and the, they're perfect for marketing. So I just wanted to hop in and say that, uh, switch over to the production cameras here. Yeah, that's that. That's a great point. That again, this is that's about ninety percent of what you're going to use. The next two categories that I have on here, kind of production and cinema cameras, these are more special use case cameras, right? These are things for I need to be do I need to do like a large um, brand campaign or something like that. Um, the production cameras, these do tend to be ones that you can purchase. They're not, you know, exorbitantly expensive. For example, the FX3 there on the top left is only about you know, $3,900. Um, the Canon there is about $5,500. The Sony on the bottom is about $6,000. So they're, they're not extremely expensive in, in the realm of, you know, high-end production equipment. But what you get out of these is really great. Um, the FX3, the kind of upgrade that you get in this guy is that it has much longer record times available before it overheats. Uh, it has a, a fan inside of it, so it'll allow it to record for a really long time without necessarily heating up. Um, it also steps up that quality. This is where you get that 422 10-bit. This is where you start to get that really high-quality uh, video footage. Um, it's also really compact. It's basically still the same size as like an A7. Uh, it, it's that same kind of low profile camera, great for gimbal shots. Now, things like the FX6, for example, it is getting bigger. It's getting larger, right? Um, this is going to allow you, again, even longer run times, more cooling inside of the camera. So it's not going to overheat. Um, but also things like internal ND filters and uh, XLR audio input. So you can use really high quality microphones. Um, things like the Canon camera there, that has internal raw recording. So that's got, you know, really basically, if you've ever worked with raw photos versus JPEG photos or something, you just know how much more information there is. You can adjust a lot of things after the fact that really have no, uh, no lossless uh, or no loss of quality to your footage, things like white balance and stuff. Um, all of this comes again with Canon colors, that dual pixel autofocus, and it's full frame. Um, it's not you know cheap, but it is full featured. It's $5,500 um, and you get basically anything you can really need. I mean, at that point having built in raw recording, you could film commercials, you could film Netflix content, you could film whatever you really wanted on this. It's just, how do you kind of build up your package from there? And then just to kind of show you guys um, where you can take it from there, I included these just so that you see that these exist. This is basically out of the range of your typical company, like what you're going to purchase for in-house. This is like a rental camera. This is something, I'm filming a commercial spot. I want to make something that looks really, really nice. These things go for, you know, $30,000 and up. This is not something you're probably going to rush out and just purchase on a whim, right? Uh, and that's just the bodies plus lenses and batteries and power, right? That airy there takes 24 volt power. So you've got to really pump a lot of power at these things, but um, they produce, you know, movie quality images. The, the two cameras here on the left, the Sony and the red are both 8K. Um, all three of them have raw options available inside. Um, the red on the bottom can record up to 300 frames per second at reduced resolutions. So they've got all these really crazy kind of high-end, very specialty features um, that allow you to do really, really interesting stuff. There's a reason that these are used in Hollywood, right? 
the airy name is, I mean, most major movies are shot on their cameras or lenses. Um, the Sony's, the Venice is being used on things like um, Avatar and, and high budget films like that. And the red cameras have made their place in things like Guardians of the Galaxy, Marvel content, like they are, they're used all over the cinema world. Um, but they're also used in commercials and things as well. Um, so there is not a lot of cons to these other than cost, right? Um, everything's going to be more expensive. The media, the lenses, the tripods, everything kind of associated with it is an astronomical leap in price from the previous option. So uh, you do have to realize that although, you know, you're getting all the bells and whistles, it's not cheap and they are much more complex. So um, there's a much steeper learning curve with something like this as well, but at the sake of being, you know, the ultimate top dog in quality. So yep. that's kind of the, uh, the, the rundown on our, our four kind of sections of cameras that we've put together for you guys. Awesome. Thanks for running through that. Yeah. So we're going to hop over to some new product announcements now that you guys fully understand cameras and everything, right? So first ones, we're, we'll hop into a drone world, actually. So drones, the new DJI Mini 3 Pro was just announced and released. Um, so really impressive stuff. Drones are kind of just kind of on the forefront in technology and they're evolving so quickly. I, I can remember just a few years ago I was using, I basically had to carry around a dedicated backpack just for my drone. Now you can see from the photo, they're literally the size of the palm of your hand. So like incredible technology advancements there for sure. It does 4K up to 60 frames a second got 34 minutes of flight time. I can also remember a few years ago, I was running on about 12 minutes. So that's a pretty good improvement. 8.8 .8 ounces. This is just a little over a half a pound. That's insane. And it also has a five mile flight distance. Of course, that's on paper. So you're never going to actually get it five miles away from you, but that's still get, that's an incredible range. You can probably still get about a little over a mile and still have a connection. So that's, that's really impressive. And then it has front, back, downwards, obstacle avoidance. So you can try to fly this thing into a wall. You can tr you can try to crash it, and it'll basically tell you, I'm not going to go down. And it's all under a 1000 US dollars. So this thing is really impressive, especially for that price tag. And I mean, Corey, you know, drones are evolving so quickly. And I, yeah. I, I'm excited to see where the technology gets in a few years. I mean, we'll be, yeah. be able to just throw something up in the air and it'll autonomously capture our video for us who knows and but. i mean you already kind of can with some of this stuff too you can program in like smart shots and all those kind of things where it can like orbit around your building and set targets based on you moving through the, like a field or whatever it is and mm -hmm. it can already kind of do a lot of really interesting and kind of cool features that you can make look really complex for b-roll and stuff like that that are you know takes you five minutes to film and it looks so much better than just, you know, taking a camera and doing a pan or something, just getting that quick moving drone shot just ups the production value so much more. And now that they're mm -hmm. so affordable, the, the price, the price, let alone just how easy they are to use mine. Yeah. My first drone, I could never even get it to fly because I could never lock <laughs> GPS. And if I tried to fly it on my own, it would just, you know, fly away. So yeah, the original drone issues, right? Yeah, they're, they're crazy these days. Yeah. All right. So we'll hop over to the next new product. And not, like I was saying, you're all very camera savvy now, right? So this is the new Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 6K G2. So basically they have the Blackmagic has a pocket cinema camera at 6K, but this is basically just a little bit of a cheaper option that takes away just basic one feature. So you got 6K recording still. Uh, you have a super 35 H HDR sensor in there. You got raw recording. Um, it goes to CFast cards. The only thing they stripped away was no internal neutral density filter. So basically what does that mean is you'll notice when you, if you ever go around a tourist attraction, you see people with cameras, typically they have things on the front of their lenses and it looks like they almost have sunglasses on it. It basically puts sunglasses on your lens to correct all of the exposure. And so built in neutral density filters, you don't have to install them onto your lens. You can just basically implement them right in the camera. They're pretty beneficial, but if it's something that let's say someone didn't need, of course, under $2,000 for a 6k raw recording camera, that's pretty impressive. Uh, Blackmagic, they had a tendency to not have great products at the beginning, but I feel like they've really kind of steadied out and they've leveled their game and, and they're working pretty correct now. So 
just some fun new products we wanted to kind of mention before we hopped into the bootcamp questions here, which we will do right now. All right. So the first question we had asked through the HubSpot video marketing bootcamp, <laughs> bootcamp study group. Sorry, a lot of confusing words and exchanging words. So first question was, do I need a camera? Can I use my phone or is it not good enough quality? And this kind of goes back to Corey's four camera slides, right? You know, we talked about the beginner and we talked a lot about um, the built-in webcam and then of course upgrading that webcam. But on top of that, a perfect entry level video camera is your phone. Everyone has a video camera in their pocket. Utilize it, start utilizing that. Like Corey was saying, you can go out, you can do your email signatures, you can do video voicemails and things through your webcam. But it, once you start to take it to the next level and you wanna start adding in video shots that complement what you're speaking to. That's called B-roll. You can go out and capture B-roll and then start to overlay those shots to your content and just kind of up that video production until you say, hey, I'm getting pretty good at this video thing. I want to really ramp it up, take it to the next level. That's when you can start really diving into the information on cameras and understanding which camera is going to be most beneficial for you. But definitely phones are the best option in terms of capturing content immediately, right? And they're great quality these days. Like I just got the, the base iPhone 13, not even the iPhone 13 Pro. And I'm blown away how much nicer it was mm -hmm. than my iPhone 10 that I had. Like the the quality has really gotten quite a bit bigger, uh, larger in terms of um, yeah, just, just quality. And uh, yeah, they also do things better. like the cinematic video modes and stuff like that now where it can use like depth data to blur backgrounds and it's doing things that some cameras can't do yet which is cool absolutely all right hopping over to the second question here i have an old canon camera in my closet could i utilize that or is it too old so of course when they just say old canon camera it's really hard to understand what that is so i did reach old out to this camera. person that i i under i asked them hey give me a model and i'll do the research for you and figure it out so came to the conclusion that this person had a Canon T3i, which is a DSLR camera. So I want to give you a quick spec run through on this camera because it, it, it does 1080p max recording. It has an APS-C CMOS sensor, which basically means it, it collects a nice amount of light, but it's not as large of a full frame um, technology advancements that it's a bit outdated there. Um, you have a CF mount, so that, that's good. You can put a lot of different lenses on it, um, but your ISO range is between 100 and 6,400. So that's that's pretty limited in today's terminology. And this was released 11 years ago, so February 2011. And basically, after all of research and everything, I came with a very simple conclusion. You're better off using your phone. Like this camera, it, it, it's good and you can capture shots, but all of the hoops that you need to jump through to make sure that this thing's working sufficiently. And if you're not inclined with video and you don't understand the workflow of the memory card into the computer and everything, just use your phone. It's, it's so much more simple. So all of the, yeah. you know, everyone has these old cameras that they can pull out of their, their closet and dust them off. But at the end of the day, I mean, you might, you might want to just be entertained, take photos with them. But at the end of the day, yeah. your phone is probably going to be more optimal for video. So. They're fun for kind of, you know, yeah, playing around with and learning the the basics of photography, right? Learning mm -hmm. aperture and shutter speed and ISO and like what those things mean. That's that's a really great thing about these, which is something that is lost a bit with um, phone photography and video. Um, but yeah, in, in terms of quality, I mean, my phone can shoot 4K, you know, like this, yeah. this can't. So we're like right there. I mean, it's it's probably going to be better quality image just based off of that alone. Absolutely. And then we have one last question from the study group. So do all-in-one solutions exist in the video world? My team wants to create video, but we're getting caught up with all the equipment involved. And I, that is the most common thing Corey and I hear. I, I want to get started with video. What do I need? And of course, we always tell them, use your phone, use your webcam, start out with that stuff, get comfortable. Then when you decide, hey, I want to take this up to the next level, that's when you really want to start looking into equipment. Uh, there are all-in-one solutions that do exist. We actually, at Nextiny, we kind of formulate and put together for some of our clients these video boxes or video packages. And so on this next slide, you can see here, we have an at-home video studio setup. So we've built several of these. Basically, we stick a camera on there. 
we have a light, we have a microphone, we put it all together and it's all just through one USB. So you plug in that one USB and now you have control to your camera. You can utilize your light. Of course, the microphone plugs directly into the camera. So that's all interconnected. And it's an all-in-one solution. I mean, it's it's also modular. This is really important too, because when, when people really want to take it to the next step, like I was mentioning, go out into the field, capture B-roll shots, you can remove the camera off of this unit go out and capture it, come back, stick it on, and then continue to use it like it's that single plug and play USB plugin. So really good information if you're looking at an at-home video studio or just kind of like an all-in-one enclosed package that you can start creating really nice video with. All right, so we'll hop into last thing here, just more questions, of course, join the study group. Um, it's a little bit of an old screenshot there, but join the study group. Make sure that you're asking questions over there because Corey and I were always popping in there and just answering people's questions, whatnot. So if you guys have questions now, go ahead and throw them in the chat. We'll just go through a quick Q and A. Um, if not, you know, Corey and I will just hang out here for a minute or two before we wrap things up in about two minutes. So yeah, thank you so much for attending. Mm -hmm.